As the sun dipped below the horizon and the cemetery gates creaked open, a small group gathered at the entrance, each clutching a flashlight and a map. The tour guide, a lanky man named Felix, dressed in a long, dark coat and sporting a thin mustache, greeted the visitors with a crooked smile and a low, drawling voice. Welcome to the nighttime cemetery tour. Keep close, follow my lead, and you may just survive the night. Nervous chuckles rippled through the group as they exchanged uneasy glances. The group consisted of an elderly couple, Margaret and John, who seemed more curious than frightened, a young woman named Emily, who was visibly shaking with every step. Two college friends, Mark and Chet, eager for thrills and chills, and a quiet man in the back named Thomas, whose eyes rarely left his phone screen. As Felix began to lead them through the winding paths among the gravestones, the cool night air seemed to whisper secrets. An owl hooted in the distance, and the rustling leaves sounded more like hushed voices than the wind. Felix paused by an old, crumbling mausoleum. This here, he said, his voice barely above a whisper, is where old Mr. Grayson was laid to rest. Some say they still hear his cane tapping on the cobblestones late at night. Mark and Chet snickered, but the rest of the group leaned in closer. Just as Felix turned to lead them away, a faint tapping sound echoed in the crisp night air. Emily stifled a scream, and Thomas finally looked up from his phone, eyes wide. They continued deeper into the cemetery, Felix recounting tales of tragic ends and restless spirits. Here we have the grave of Abigail Frost. Legend has it, if you place a flower on her grave, you'll hear her laughter carried by the wind. As if on cue, a soft, tinkling laugh floated through the air. Margaret clutched John's arm tightly, and Emily seemed on the verge of tears. Mark, trying to appear brave, tossed a flower from a nearby bush onto the grave. The laughter grew louder, sending chills down everyone's spine. The tour reached its final stop, the oldest part of the cemetery. Felix stopped beside a tall, gnarled tree, its branches stretching out like skeletal arms. And this, he said with a dramatic pause, is where Isaac Brewer was buried after he was accused of witchcraft. They say his spirit roams these grounds, seeking revenge on those who wronged him. As if responding to Felix's words, an icy gust of wind howled through the trees, causing the group to huddle together. Suddenly, a shadowy figure darted behind a nearby gravestone. Emily shrieked, and Mark and Chet's bravado melted away as they tried to hide behind each other. That's our cue to leave, Felix said, his voice quivering just slightly. The group needed no further encouragement. They hurried back to the entrance, flashlights bobbing wildly. As they reached the gates, Felix turned to face them, his earlier confidence replaced by a somber expression. Thank you for joining the nighttime cemetery tour. Remember, the spirits you've met tonight, they may follow you home. With that, he disappeared into the shadows, leaving the group to scatter into the night, each wondering if they would ever return to the cemetery or if the cemetery would come to them.